yeah, I put my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. There's five blokes outside my front door. Can you come and help One me? hell of a fucking story, so stay tuned. Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Feel like we haven't spoken in a while, man. It's good to see you, mate. You're looking well. Thank you, mate. You too. You too, mate. So uh, good to see you back. Top man. Um, yeah, always good when there's kind of that big fight feeling. But a big fight feeling in London at the O2, it just gives it that extra little bit, doesn't it? It does. It does. It's a, it's a great venue. And uh, for a great venue, you want a great card. And I believe on Saturday night, this is a great card. Just spoke about it in the presser. Just, I think, from top to bottom. And uh, the two title fights are real pickums and the kind of fights that boxing fans want to see. Obviously, time moves quickly, as we know, but is it something you could have envisioned when you started out, or even when you were world champion around that period? Could you have envisioned a full female card of this level as well? Probably not. Probably not. I'm really glad it's, um, it's happening. You know, I've, I've seen the, the, the level that have been raised throughout the women's game, right from the amateurs, right through, obviously, to the pros. Um, I'm glad they're now getting that night, this night, and uh, the spotlight. I think, well, it's now like say it's, it's every, every, um, every show nearly consists of a women's fight, but now it's a full card and it's um, it's well deserved. Which fight are you looking forward to, out of the top two? I know that's a hard question, isn't it? Do you know what? <laughs> I think a lot of people from our end seem to be saying Savannah because of the UK interest, but as fights. So. And because, uh, you know, I really like Savannah and Peter, so probably that one as, as well, but Mayor Baumgard is an absolute belt. Like you're saying, it's good people going on about an all women's card, but even one of those fights could, could top a bill uh, with men's world title fights, only my opinion. So it's uh, the two great fights, but they're both, it's just it's so hard to call a winner, so hard to call a winner, so... To get, to get them both on the same night, it's, it's, I think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to struggle to get the double up there. No, you ain't wrong. Um, it's kind of, I say build as like a boxer versus a puncher, but it's so much more than that because Savannah can box and Clarissa can hit hard. So yeah. it's not just boxer versus puncher, but it's kind of being billed as that. And I suppose it is when you look at their best attributes. Of course, yeah. And um, you go off, you know, recent form and common opponents and stuff like that. But I think you've got to, you've got to remember Clarissa's a double Olympic gold medalist. I first seen her, age 17, in Bolton for the holding camp for the US Olympic team. And um, I remember at that time, like a big gambler or anything like that, I was phoning all my mates, listen, there's this American girl called Clarissa Shields. I think she was at 75. I was going, get it on, get whatever you can get, get on her winning the gold medal. And, um, and she finger. She, she was unbelievable and yeah, she did, she went on and won it and then went, went on to win after that as well. But I believe as a professional, Savannah's changed an awful lot. And I also believe she's, she's made the more improvements. Both unbelievable fighters. I think the height will help Savannah as well. Uh, but I'm, I'm, going, I'm, going with, um, I'm going with a Savannah win, a Savannah Marshall's win. But it's so tough to call. I'll be interested to know, obviously, um, you're obviously a man who knows your boxing and you're kind of in the coaching form now, so I'd love to know what you saw, because you said this was in the holding camp. This wasn't post-Olympics when you'd seen her. This is like, what did you see in that sort of... I saw this, the ferocity, the, do you know how explosive she was? Because you've got to remember, that was the first time we've seen women's boxing in the Olympic Games, wasn't it? I think I'm right in saying. Um, and I was just, I was seeing what was happening when she was hitting girls, like, you know, about sounding crude, I remember there was two girls she was sparring, she really took the head clean up and they had to stop it and have a sparring, you know, some of the lads and stuff like that. And these girls then went on to go in the quarter, they didn't go out first round either, the girls she was sparring, so there was decent girls, but it was just, you know, a movement, or, um, the explosiveness from her, it was, no it was, it was mind blowing for me. Yeah, can't wait for, for that fight on Saturday night. Um, and just kind of in terms of a fight with Needle, this kind of goes for both fights, but we'll talk about Michaela and Alicia, I guess. Um, when there's a fight with Needle, you've got to kind of eliminate that in a sense because you can't go in there and just burn loads of energy wanting to take someone's head off. You know? that's, that's the thing, I think, what a lot of people are saying about Michaela. If she goes in there with to stick it on Alicia, does she walk on to shots, um, which wouldn't suit her? So you think, does she box a bit more, you know, use that height advantage? That's what you think, but... 
we're seeing the heat of battle and what's to say everyone has a plan so they get punched in the face don't you so it's uh, I think that I really believe that fight it's hard, so hard to pick a winner it comes down to who can stick to the game plan yeah cannot wait for Saturday night I know we haven't got too long before the next one but I do have to ask you of course about the whole Fury AJ thing um 60 40 kind of that in terms of an offer considering Joshua is coming off the back of two defeats obviously he's a massive commercial draw anyway um 60 40 if you're in Joshua's team do you look at that and go for a WBC world title shot yes yeah oh, I'll be honest like it's mad like I just I just think there's so much more to it listen I'd love to see it I'd, I'd love to see it before the end of the year do I think we will see it I'd be absolutely shocked but I'm happily shocked if we do see it this year uh, do I think the offer's fair listen there's, there's a business side of things I know some people will say there's no denying that the gesture is a huge job but Tyson's profile has gone through the absolute roof now it's um, I think both of them are two of the most recognisable I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here two of the most recognisable faces in sport do you know what I mean across all sports as well could you even say two of the most recognisable faces in Britain in just general even in celebrity life absolutely absolutely. Like my nan would know them both yeah, yeah. yeah of course of course they would yeah they would and um, so it's, it's hard where I mean I don't know the numbers I'm sure there'll be arguments from both teams but I don't know you've got to look Tyson Fury's just done 94,000 at Wembley so he is a big draw it's a huge draw, so I don't know whether it's fair to say, oh, everything lies with... I know AJ has done that for years, but where Tyson is right now, he's, he's an absolute superstar. He was at wrestling. He was at the wrestling the other night, so do I think, you know, with all the belts and stuff like that, if, if there's not too much between them draw, then yeah, I probably do think a 60-40 is fair, but I mean, on that side of things, the politics side of things, I'm, there's a lot of people in the background who say different, isn't there? But um, it's a tough fight, you know, after the two Usyk fights to then go in with um, Tyson Fury so soon as well. It would take a match. You'd be right to take that, um, I, I feel like That's been a bit split as well, some I, people saying yes, I some think, no. I think aim for it. I aim for it early next year, to be honest. Um, if, if you're advising Joshua, if you're advising Joshua, but of course I want to see it in December. Everyone, the whole nation wants to see it, don't they? But do I believe we'll see it without being a fun sponsor? Like, no, absolutely not. I'll be shocked. Happily shocked if it happens. Right, thanks, Anthony. One more thing, Ten Hag. Right. What are you feeling? Yeah, Ten Hag in. I um, do you know what? Honestly, I was there at Bright. Well, he was in Old, old Trafford against Brighton, and you know, first day of the season, you know what it's like. Oh, good seeing how we've been. Some have been good and all that. Every there's a buzz to it, and then like forty minutes in, I'm there. Fucking Danny Welbeck, our former player, is the best player on the pitch. We're getting beat two 0 and I was like, to my mate, and um. I'm like that, you know, my brother, I've fucking I've really missed this. I've fucking really missed this. Then Brentford. But yeah, no, things have changed and the atmosphere's really picked up from Liverpool as well that night. Because I thought it was on an island. But it was, uh, no, it was a great night. It was a great night. It's these great times at Old Trafford again. But we have been filled with false hope before. I'll wait for Ten Hag against Graham Potter, mate. Nah, it should be good, it should be good. <laughs>